name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. From Psalm 122, I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Suzanne, could you please lead us in the confession of sin? Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on all of us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Sue, if you could help with the psalm. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, come, let us adore him. The psalm today is Psalm 104. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, my God, how excellent is your greatness. You are clothed with majesty and splendor. You wrap yourself with, a li with, a, with light as with a cloak. And spread out the heavens like a curtain. You lay the beams of your chambers in the waters above. You make the clouds your chariot. You ride on the wings of the wind. You make the winds your messengers. And flames of fire your servants. You have set the earth upon its foundations. So that it never shall move at any time. You covered it with the deep as with a mantle. The waters stood high than the mountains. At your rebuke they fled. At the voice of your thunder they hastened away. They went up into the hills and down to the valleys beneath. To the places you had appointed for them. You set the limits that they should not pass. They shall not again cover the earth. O Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Hallelujah. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Job. The Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind. Who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Gird up your loins like a man. I will question you and you shall declare to me. Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. Who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon it? On what were its bases sunk? Or who laid its cornerstone? When the morning stars sang together and all the heavenly beings shouted for joy. Can you lift up your voice to the clouds so that a flood of water may cover you? Can you set forth lightning so that they may go and say to you, here we are? Who has put wisdom in the inward parts or given understanding to the mind? Who has the wisdom to number the clouds? Or who can tilt the water skins of the heavens when the dust runs into a mass and the clods cling together? Can you hunt the prey for the lion or satisfy the appetite of the young lions when they crouch in their den or lie in wait in their covert? Who provides for the raven its prey when its young ones cry to God and wander about for lack of food? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gretchen, could you please lead us in the song of Zechariah? Got to come off mute, Gretchen. There you go. We'll give them another minute. There you go. Gretchen and Herb, yeah, I think you can read now. All right, here we go. All right. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. 
He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who, swell in, who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Hebrews. Every high priest chosen from among mortals is put in charge of things pertaining to God on their behalf to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He is able to deal gently with the ignorant and wayward since he himself is subject to weakness and because of this, he must offer sacrifice for his own sins as well for those of the people. And one does not presume to take this honor, but takes it only when called by God, just as Aaron was. So also Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, You are my son. Today I have begotten you. As he says also in, other, in another place, you are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. He was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him, having been designated by God a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel today is taken from Mark. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to Jesus and said to him, Teacher, <clears throat> We want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, what is, what is it you want me to do for you? And they said to him, grant us to sit, one at the right hand and one at your left, in your glory. But Jesus said to them, you do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink or be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They replied, we are able. Then Jesus said to them, the cup that I drink, you will, uh, you will drink. And with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. When they heard this, they began to be angry. With, with, uh, when they heard this, they began to be angry with James and John. So Jesus called them and said to them, you know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as their rulers, lord it over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. But it is not so among you. But whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wishes to be first among you must be a slave for all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So the uh, reflections today are the voice of Dan, but the uh, words of Father Ian. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> the thing about the worship of the God of Israel is that it's set apart from all, the all, all other religions, and that it is a revealed religion. The pagan regions of the surrounding nations had human origins. Humans imagined that there must be divine powers at work in the world, and they were absolutely right about that. After all, St. Augustine tells us that God implanted the impulse in every human heart to seek out God. 
But the pagans imagined, first of all, that one god couldn't possibly be powerful enough for the to rule the entire cosmos. So there must be there must be many gods. And second, they endowed these many gods with characteristics of sinful humans. Jealousies, rivalries, greed, lust, and all the other deadly sins. They were limited by their own imaginations. They even made images of the gods who looked like themselves. Now, the Egyptians, a little bit ahead of their time, they were a bit more creative, making their gods in the images of animals and assigning to them the essential characteristics of those animals. That's where Aaron got the idea of making the golden calf for the Israelites when he got tired of waiting for Moses to come down from the mountain. And as time went on, various people added to the mythology, mythologies of the various gods. Psalm 115 makes a laughing stop of those uh, when he says, their idols are silver and gold, the work of human hands. They have mouths, but they cannot speak. They have eyes, but they cannot see. They have ears, but they cannot hear. Noses, but they cannot smell. They have hands, but they cannot feel. Feet, but they cannot walk. They make no sound with their throat. And then the psalm mocks both their inventors and their worshipers, saying, those who make them are like them, and so are all who put their trust in them. Their makers and the worshipers are every bit as dumb as they are. And the same can be said for the idols we set up and put our trust in, like money, like political leaders, imagining they will cure all of our ills. And again, the psalmist says, Put not your trust in your in rulers, nor in the child of earth, for there is no help in them. On the other hand, the religion of Yahweh, the God who identified himself as Moses, said, I am the one who is, the being is revealed by none other than Yahweh himself. And he has revealed himself only so much as we, as humans, with all of our limits, can handle. He's actually revealed more than that to us, but certainly not everything. And by pretending to know more than we do, we really prove time and time again how little we do comprehend. And that's one of the major points that the book of Job is making. Who are we to assume to know the hidden ways of God? The story begins, as we read a couple of weeks ago, there once was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job. That man was blameless and upright, one who feared God and turned away from evil. Now, it's unlikely that this story is historically true. It's more likely that a Jewish author appropriated the story from other religious traditions, which they used to explain why the innocent suffer and to interpret it in a way that made sense in the light of what Yahweh has revealed himself. We know the story. God gives permission to Satan, i.e. the accuser, to take away everything that is dear to Job, except his own life, and to see if he still trusts God after all. And that's, when, that's what Satan does. He afflicts Job with a terrible skin disease, but rather than curse God for it, he curses the day of his own birth. Ultimately, Satan wipes out all of his children, his livestock, everything else that belongs to him. Yet Job refuses. He refuses to curse God. Meanwhile, Job's three friends sit with him through it all and offer up all sorts of explanations as to why God did this to him. And of course, none can give him a satisfactory answer. You must have angered God, they say. What did you do wrong? Another asks. In what way did you sin? All the questions that so many people of faith so often ask in the midst of suffering. And unless we're grounded in God's salvation, they're often led to the long conclusion that God did this terrible thing to them or this terrible thing to us. Finally, and this brings us to today's reading, God responds to all their foolish wisdom. So I know this is one of your favorite quotes. Who is it that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Gird up your loins like a man. I will question you, and you shall declare to me. Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me if you have an understanding. And on and on, God goes into this eloquent, beautiful smackdown of worldly folly, passing itself off as wisdom. And the bottom line of it all is that in a fallen world is not just a place. Good people suffer unjustly. People in the Appalachians, regardless of how righteous or sinful they are, lost everything in the recent hurricanes. People suffer the oppression of mental illness. And the underlying reason for it all is that the creation itself is enslaved to decay 
as Paul says. And in Romans, he says, as it suffers together the pains of labor, awaiting a day of redemption. Job was right in not forsaking God and persevering in his faith and insisting on the goodness and providence of God and rejecting the easy answers of foolish friends. It is all beyond our capacity to understand, so there's no point in God explaining. Theologian Austin Farrer said, God does not give us explanations. We do not comprehend the world, and we are not going to. It is and remains for us a confused mystery of bright and dark. God does not give us explanations. He gives us his son, and the son has an explanation. The explanation of our death leaves us no less dead than we were. But Jesus, the son, gives us life in which we live. We think we know this immense, incomprehensible, unnameable God who identifies himself as I am. And to us, God says, how can you know the one who made the Pleiades and the Orion and turns darkness into morning and darkness into night and darkens the night, the day into night, who calls for the water of the sea and pours it out on the surface of the earth? I am in his name. And some of us think that we know God better than others which is even more foolish presumption, like James and John, who thought it would be the greatest triumph to be enthroned on either side of Christ, when in reality it was the two thieves crucified, one on the right and one on the left. And we use what we think we know to beat up each other and to hate rather than to love each other. Instead, all we can do, all we know about God is that, as what John says, God is love, and whoever doesn't know love does not know God. But what can we know, and what do we know now, is that instead of explanation, God gives us his son, who died to give us life, a confused mystery of light and dark. Such is God's deep love for us. The letter to the Hebrews describes Jesus as a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. The mysterious priest of the Most High God, who appeared out of nowhere to Abraham, where did he come from? Where did he go? What happened to him? There's no explanation. But Genesis says that he brought out bread and wine. He was the precursor of Christ himself. Likewise, Christ is cloaked in mystery. You don't have to understand. You just need to believe and to commune. God doesn't impart his forgiveness, his salvation, his life to those who ace the exam. We don't need to nail everything down. We don't need to be able to articulate the nature and character of God. He shares it generously with those who eat and drink of his body and who taste and see that the Lord is good. And beyond these gracious gifts, God's loving vocation to all who trust in him. What does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to do love and kindness and to walk humbly with your God? In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Charlie, if you could please lead us in the Apostles' Creed. Okay, good. Um, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Punctius Pilate, was crucified, died, was buried. He descended to the dead, and on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray in the words Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Father, if you could please help with the suffrages. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance.
govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day, we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord. Have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy. For we put our trust in you. And you, Lord, is our hope. And we shall never hope in vain. Colic for today. Almighty and everlasting God, in Christ you have revealed your glory among all the nations. Preserve the works of your mercy, that our church throughout the world may persevere with steadfast faith in the confession of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray for the sick and the suffering. Heavenly Father, giver of life and health, comfort and relieve your sick servants. We pray today for Judy Roman, for Trudy Roman, for Don Lockerby, for Marian Lorenzo, for Father Ian, for Olivia Hubbard, for Allison Mize, for Bill Harvey, for Parker Monez, for Beth Whiteside, for Lucy and Tony Cardamone, for the Almash family, for Ernest Gibbers, for Rosie Connor, for Lorraine Porak, for Peggy McMillan, and all those uh, who are suffering from the results of the recent hurricanes. Are there others? Joanne, Stephanie, Jill, Regina, Josephine. Lord, we ask that you give your power of healing to those that minister to their needs, that they may be strengthened in their weakness and have confidence in your loving care. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us also pray for the departed. O oh God, who by the glorious resurrection of your son, Jesus Christ, destroyed death and brought life and uh, immortality to light. Grant that your servants, and we pray especially today for John D. Agostino, John Weller, Tom Newman, Ann Kelly, Gene Howman, Mark Gaeta, Michael Kerr, Anna Kerr Good, Ann Scalise, Sven Haas, and Pastor Bob Motor. Are there others? Victims of war in the in the Middle East and in Ukraine and Russia. Being raised with him may know the strength of his presence and rejoice in his eternal glory. Who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God forever and ever. Amen. Before we uh, pray the prayer for mission under the Anglican cycle of prayer, today we pray for the Anglican Church of Rwanda. We pray for our presiding bishop, uh, Michael. Uh, Sean, our presiding bishop-elect, who will be installed soon. For Larry, our bishop, and for Ian, our vicar. Suzanne, could you please lead us in the prayer for mission? Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you. Through Jesus, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Other intentions today, we give thanks for the return of the health of uh, Dan and Sue, who were knocked down with COVID, and we appreciated your prayers. Any other intentions for today? Pray in thanksgiving for the efforts of all the volunteers who made the uh, Souls All Souls race a great success on many levels. Suzanne, could you please lead us in the general thanksgiving? Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Sue, could you please lead us in the prayer of St. Christendom? Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. 
Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen.